All right, so I'll call to order this uh, May 8th, 2018 school board workshop. If, uh, if you will let the record or the roll minutes reflect, rather, that all members are present this evening, along with Dr. Jones and our student liaison, Ms. Brindley. Uh, the first item on our agenda after the roll call is the approval of the agenda. Do any members of the uh, board have changes or additions to the agenda, draft agenda as presented? Is there a motion to approve the uh, agenda for the evening? So moved. Have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Emil seconds the motion of Ms. Ayers. All in favor of approving the agenda as presented, please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Takes us to our public comment period for the workshop. This period provides an opportunity for individuals or delegations wishing to comment to the board to do so. Uh, there is a time limit of three minutes per individual and five minutes per group with a total time limit of 30 minutes. Anyone wishing to come forward and speak, please identify yourself by name to the board. Public comment period is open. <coughs> Anyone wishing to take advantage of public comment period? All right, seeing no movement, I'll bring the public comment period to a close. Dr. Jones, I believe we have a few presentations for the workshop. We do, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, the first presentation is an update on our uh, work of our special education department. Uh, it's been a while since we provided an update with the board, and we wanted to give you an update on uh, some of the new things going on, as well as uh, general services and um, work that's been going on in the department. Dr. Prince? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Good Dr. Evening. Jones, and the school board members. I am excited to be able to share with you information that I have from our special education department and what we are doing this school year. The services that we can provide start at age three and it goes through age 21. Over the last couple of years, we provided training for our daycare providers in our community to help them be able to identify children that might have deficits as well as offering them resources to teach them skills that are needed. We are able to offer three models for our preschool program. Our three models, our first model is our early childhood special education program, and those are for students that have specialized needs and it's located at Flat Rock Elementary School. 50% of the students that are there are role model students, and we are happy to say that we have a three-year-old class and a four-year-old class that's available for those students. Another preschool program that we have is our VPI program that is located at Pocahontas Elementary School. VPI is funded by the state and was created to lower the disparity among young children and eliminate risk factors before they enter school. So it's very important that we get them early. We've just started that process of applications and we're almost full already with those, those spots that we have. Currently this program is located at Pocahontas Elementary and we have 18 students that are currently enrolled. Our third preschool program is our Richmond Head Start program, which accepts three and four year old students. Teachers and staff are employed by, by Richmond Public Schools and those students have to meet qualifications. Our specialized instruction programs that we have with Powhatan County Public Schools, we have two programs, our community-based program and our level two autism program. Our community-based program gives students the opportunity to contribute to their community beyond the classroom. Their experiences are integrated into classes like a reading assignment would be an example, providing them with additional testing for considerations during class discussion. The activities for the program includes work-based learning, travel instruction, recreation, community awareness, and independent living skills. We offer supports for all of our students in various settings. For example, our level two autism program, there are three levels um, that we identify our students for autism, which level one is included with all other students um, that are given support in the majority of their classes. Our level two students are offered a smaller class settings to meet, to meet their unique needs. As a part of our Region 1 Autism Consortium, we've partnered with schools in Region 1 to be able to offer supports instead of having to go to outside placements. So we are excited to have our Region 1 Consortium. 
For our transition services, high school and beyond, PCPS begins transition services beginning from 8th grade through 12th grade. Mid-year during students' 8th grade year, our transition coordinator from the high school has met with the middle school teachers to discuss students and the classes that they transition to. Our transition coordinator meets with every student that has a disability at the high school level at least three times per year for transitioning purposes. She helps them with college applications, research scholarships, and explore apprenticeships and trade schools. Students with special needs have been taken to John Tyler Community College to meet the disabilities coordinator there and to discuss and put in place academic adjustments for their freshman year. Students also have a DARS counselor that meets with them once per month and that allows them to look at job opportunities that are in the community. And DARS stands for Department for Aging and Re Rehabilitative Services. Thank you for explaining the acronym. Yes. acronym. There are not a lot of acronyms with yeah. the special education department. Good. On the job training, this year students were asked about their interest and where they would like to work in the community. And in the past, they've worked in our fast food restaurants, for example. This year, um, we, we sought out different locations for them to work in. and. Um, we actually have two young people that have, were interested in working in Powhatan County Public Schools. Um, we have one student that has partnered with a PE teacher that's at the elementary school at Pocahontas Elementary, as well as a student that has partnered with our bus garage, and he is working with um, a mechanic that's there. We have Backpacks of Love, Hertzler Farm, Harriff Jones, um, and for Harriff Jones, our graduation announcements were actually put together by some of our students that are at the high school. So it's great to see our students working in our community and being able to get those skills um, and can filter it back into our community. Sports activities. We're proud to say that our students and teachers support our students and seek out ways to include them in activities. Currently, students participate in the Chesterfield Medford League basketball, and we have students that also cheer for that team. The entire school is invited to support them, and they come in during lunchtime to cheer them on. We also have students that are members of the track team. Our teachers support students in and outside of the classroom by participating in different relays, 10K events, just so that they are supported in and out of the classroom. Resources that we have for our students. This year, our SEAC committee established two goals for awareness and training, which include dyslexia presentation and training, PBIS VTSS presentation and training. Ms. Engel, our reading specialist, came and spoke to our committee, as well as discussed the plan that will be put into place for next year for our division. As a part of the plan, for dyslexia awareness goals and strategies have been established as we prepare for training for next year. We also had the opportunity to hear from Ms. Wojcicki as she presented the division's move towards all schools participating in PBIS and VTSS this school year. Another resource that is offered for our parents is our Parent Resource Center that is loca located at Pocahontas Elementary School. We have our Hands Across Powhatan, which is a resource for our parents and students. PAC, Powhatan Autism Committee, which we had reading groups that were established this school year. Autism Awareness that was presented to all of our schools, as well as movie night. For our celebrations, which we always like to have celebrations. Our celebrations that we would like to build upon, we have the best staff for all of our students. Four out of five of our administrators have a background in special education. This year, we've gone from four to eight certified safety care trainers, which will now allow us to train more staff members in working with students that may be combative or non-compliant in the most conducive way. This year, we receive a competitive grant through DOE for inclusive practice partnership from a team at Pocahontas Elementary that applied. There were over 30 plus applicants with only 16 receiving this grant opportunity. Teachers will be able to model their collaborative project at a conference and other school divisions will be able to visit their classrooms. We also had one of our instructional assistants that were honored by a parent at a regional conference. 
We were selected as a division into the Early Childhood Education Leaders Community of Learners for Inclusive Programs. The focus of this will be on building and maintaining high quality early childhood inclusive programs. Teamwork always makes the dream work. Our lead teachers, coaches, Region 1 Consortium, TDAC are supports that have been offered to our staff members this year. All of these celebrations could not be possible without having a great school board, a superintendent that's supportive, as well as our lead division team that is in support of inclusion for all of our students. Thank you. All right, thank you, ma'am. Questions from the uh, board for Dr. Prince or Dr. Jones? Well, I'm gonna say something if All no right. one else is. Okay, well, well, I'd like to start off with the celebrations of um, that uh, we're so lucky to have Dr. Prince taking over this year. Um, she has just been uh, a go-getter, a real good listener to um, parents um, at the SEAC committee. I'm, I'm uh, our advisor, not our advisor, our... Um, school board representative. Thank you, school yes, board representative. And um, there's many parents that have been um, wanting more with the dyslexia and with the um, legislature and the uh, Department of Education helping us. Um, they're they're go-getters. They, they, some of the parents, um, this won't apply to their children because they're much older now, but they want the best for the children <coughs> coming up and they want their experiences with the um, parents in our school system to be even better because they know what they were looking for and um, now we're trying to get that going. And so as we have the autism um, uh, group, the um, dyslexic uh, parents want to have their own group and um, Dr. Prince is spearheading that and getting that going. Um, I, sh you just have a fabulous style, Dr. Prince. You're an excellent listener and um, I know the parents um, really do appreciate it. So I wanted to just make sure that you know that, that we're celebrating you now. Thank she you. always does celebrations at the early <laughs> part of the meetings. And, oh, and by the way, I was at the um, uh, celebration of the horse this weekend. I forgot to mention this at our meeting yesterday. Um, the Mesa Vista, I guess it's called, riding school, they said that they did um, horseback riding lessons for our special education children years ago. They did. And sh they, they were wondering if we were interested in doing that again. So um, maybe we can put that on the discussion table for next year. Okay, thank you. All right, hey, Mr. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Cole. Dr. Prince, you mentioned our early our preschool initiatives and, yes. and said that we were basically almost full, uh, almost reached our applications mm -hmm. at this point. Are we meeting the need with what we currently have, or do we have some students out there with needs we're not able to meet because we don't have capacity at this point? We do have enough um, spots for the capacity. We actually have to um, shake the bushes to get the students to come and apply. Okay. So um, we definitely mm -hmm. encourage them to apply each year um, so that we are able to fill up our spots. Okay. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, and that's one of the reasons that we've started reaching out to the private daycare uh, providers and, and pro to try to provide them with extra support and resources because we do know that a lot of families take advantage of that. And we have several outstanding um, daycare facilities and preschool facilities in the county, but we want to make sure we're coordinating with them. Um, last week, Smart Beginnings, which is, has come and presented to the board before, and spearheads kindergarten registration, but their broader mission is making sure students are ready for school. Uh, they just announced last week at an event that they're launching a program called RVI, RVA Basics, which is going to provide even more resources and support to early childhood education. So we'll be tapped into that as well, which will be a, a, a great service to the community, and we're looking forward to getting more information about that. I'm, I'm heartened to hear about the collaboration uh, with that and you know the, the region one consortium you mentioned that I was going to ask a question but you mentioned that we, were, we had some students participating in those programs yep. which hopefully is, you know which I know is saving us some money at this point but but early childhood education as all of us know is is, is critical yes. especially for those students who, who don't get that support at home and, and you know so I'm, I'm I applaud the efforts that we're making and, and I and I just encourage us 
as a division to keep looking for those students that, that need that special help because a little bit of investment before school certainly pays off big time once they get to it. So, so thank yeah. you for what's going on in that area. All right, thank you, Mr. Cole. Any other comments or questions for Dr. Prince or Dr. Jones? All right. Thank, thank you, Dr. You. Prince. Thank you, Dr. Thank Prince. You. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Jones? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next uh, presentation, um, as we all know, summer is right around the corner, <coughs> and while the students won't be with us um, in their current capacity, uh, learning continues during the summer. So uh, Dr. Amahundro is here to provide an overview of um, our summer learning, both for students and for our staff. Okay. Dr. Amandra. Good evening. As you know, uh, we have a wide variety of offerings for our students over the course of the summer, and this year's presentation I'm expanding a little bit to also include some of the things that we do for our staff as well, because learning is never over in Powhatan County, so I'll explore a few of the things that we've got going on this summer. So as I mentioned, We've got both our students and staff participating. Sorry. And um, some of the things that we have going on for our students as we've had in the past are our summer camps. We also have summer school. And then for our teachers, uh, we haven't discussed these um, as often, but we do have summer institutes as well as a wide variety of other options for teachers and staff to participate during the summer. So a little bit about our summer camps, of course. Um, they continue to grow and they're extremely popular uh, with our community. We will run those camps between June 25th and July 26th. Um, we are dependent on our staff members to make those camps go and we're very pleased that they provide that support. Um, we do them largely in the month of July because August then comes the time where we're doing cleaning of facilities and getting ready for back to school with our staff. So we really focus on late June and, er and the month of July for our camps. Uh, we do have camps that range in cost from the from thirty dollars to one hundred and five, and that really is dependent upon supplies that might be required for the camp. Uh, the thirty dollars is the basic that will cover um, the staffing for our camps, um, and then the extra, any additional funds is for any supplies or activities that they have within the camp. And we've asked this year that families register for camp by May twenty fifth, which will allow us to get our staffing taken care of in a timely manner. So these are the wide variety of camps that we have, and you can see that you, there's really something for everyone. Um, some of the new ones that we have this year, there's a video photography and a st steam creation nation, and that's Miss Phillips over at Pocahontas Elementary. We had a great success with the Harry Potter camp during the regular school year that was an after school camp, and we're um, bringing that right into a week-long camp. Uh, for students this summer. Um, we've got our traditional um, computer science camps with our programming um, and our tech divas that have always been popular. Several of our CTE organizations have uh, offered camps and we're actually um, have a reboot with our culinary group that's doing an in, in the kitchen camp this year. So lots of uh, enrichment camps available. But then we also have our athletic camps. Um, you can see that this year we've added a lacrosse camp. Um, for the, I believe that's our first time for the lacrosse camp. So athletic offerings for our kids as well. Of course, academics, we want to make sure that we are keeping students in the loop with academics over the summer. We do have some new locations for our academics um, summer camps this year, or our academic uh, summer school this year. We're going to be at Pocahontas Elementary and Pocahontas Middle School. That's because we want to make sure that uh, we have an opportunity to take care of some of the facilities on the eastern end of the county um, that have been in the past been uh, waiting until the end of the summer to get cleaning done. So we're going to do a little bit of extra work down on that end of the county. So we will be uh, providing transportation as we've done in the past, but to those two, no lo two new locations. And our summer school, our academics are during the month of July. We have several types of summer academic programs. We focus in a variety of areas. So sometimes we're going to look at readiness. We'll look at recovery, whether it's credit recovery or SOL recovery. We do have some students who want to take advanced courses, and we do offer remediation or courses that are required for promotion. So in the area of readiness, we've discussed this in the past, but we do do a kindergartner screener uh, when students come in for kindergarten registration. We use that to identify students who may need extra support in preparation for kindergarten, and we will be working on invitations for those students who we want to invite to a summer kindergarten readiness camp. There's a similar situation for our Algebra 1 students, those students who are moving on to the high school but may need some additional support in preparation for Algebra 1. They also will be invited to participate in that. 
As far as advancement goes, uh, we have several online options that students can take a wide variety of courses, but our two most popular are actually local online courses, and that's our economics and personal finance course and our health and PE course. We have lots of students who want to take advantage of those courses in the summer so that they can do things in certain areas of interest or something that they may have a passion, whether it's the arts or career and technical education. That gives them more time during the regular school year to accomplish those. For credit recovery, we have a variety of options. That's for students who were not successful during the regular school year in a course. They can take a face-to-face -face course in the areas of math or English. If there are other areas where they need support, we do have online courses for those students, and those are at a reduced rate because they've already participated in, in the regular school hours. SOL recovery, we do a program called Project Graduation, and those are for our students who need to uh, retake SOLs during the summer. Uh, our largest group is generally in the area of writing, uh, but we do provide opportunities for students to participate in math, science, and social studies recovery courses. And then for remediation and pr promotion, um, in elementary school we do have some reading interventions and math interventions and STEM enrichment through our traditional summer school program for elementary students. They are invited to that program and those invitations are going out this month. Uh, we are adding a Title IV reading program and that's something that we received a $10,000 grant for and that we will identify students who most need support in reading so that we can keep that reading activity going on with them throughout the summer maybe even in addition to some of the remediation programs if they were in part of the regular summer school program. And then at the middle school, we do have students who may need to take math or English for their promotion to the next level, um, and SOL academies for students who did not perform well in SOLs in the previous year so that they're prepared for the next level in an SOL course. For the staff, um, I have a little quote here from Michelangelo, though when I did my research, it's actually not a quote from him, but it's been attributed to him many times. So and in all um, full disclosure, it's not his exact quote, but it's still I learn. And it really spoke to me because I'm always so impressed by the fact that the staff spends a lot of time over the course of the summer making sure that they're prepared to meet the needs of the students. And while we offer specific summer institutes that I'll speak about, we do have staff who participate in things outside of what we ask of them during the summer months, and still they learn. So we do offer three times for summer institutes, and you can see those dates here. That is an opportunity for them to come in and do some work. It is something that will be re-offered during the teacher work week, but many of our teachers, by the time they get to teacher work week, they're ready to dig in and to get into their classrooms and to get prepared for students returning. So this is an opportunity for them to do some learning in advance. It also, if they participate in this summer learning in advance, they may then go on to do extra um, learning in that area to prepare for the students return. So some of the summer institute programs um, that we will offer, we will focus on communication and collaboration to make sure that we have a focus on how to provide instruction in writing in all content areas. We also want to make sure that that is able to be put into action in each of the content areas, so that's communication and collaboration and action. Also working off of our DL421 concept, We've got a wide variety of teachers and our instructional team who are going to offer exploration into different DL421 concepts, whether it's new technologies or different strategies to meet the four outcomes that we have as part of DL421. And then finally, some Ignite sessions. This is something that is going to be new. As teachers travel from session to session, there will be different stations set up for five to ten minutes where teachers can just come and access something quick and easy, a new strategy or a new tool that several of our um, coaches want to present to them. And there's more. Uh, students also participate, as you know, uh, we do partner with the library for summer reading programs and literacy programs. We have summer reading programs specifically at the high school for students to um, participate in. And the staff, we're going to offer optional training modules online. Again, those are things that they will have time to do during the teacher work week, but by providing them with this online training during the summer, they could get ahead. One of those modules um, is on dyslexia that's going to be required for all teachers for recertification, but we're going to go ahead and have all teachers complete that prior to next school year, as well as bloodborne pathogens, some of the um, training that is annual, and that will allow them to get ahead of the curve and have time during teacher work week. 
Also, our staff has an option of participating in book clubs. We have several schools who have identified books that they want to read with their staff on small levels, not across the school level, but um, several of them will participate in book clubs. And then external workshops will send folks to JMU and to other locales. Uh, we've got a group that's going to Rockingham to do some tech training, so a wide variety of opportunities through external workshops that they'll participate in. So it will be a busy summer. Any questions that you might have? Questions from the board? I have a, Ms. Ayers. <clears throat> a couple. Um, for the camps, what is the, is it a four day week and how long do they go every day? So it depends for um, each of the camps as to whether they're four, most of them are four days, there are a few that are extended, but they're half day camps. Okay. Yes. And half day is what? Uh, what I, the, I feel sorry. like it says 12, but I, I'm almost positive. It's the same as the summer. It runs right in conjunction with the summer school. Okay. Okay. That's good. And um, the summer institutes for the teachers, are those, is that considered professional development? Is that what that is? It is. It's professional development versus training. So it, we have things that they need to be trained in. So that would be something like dyslexia. But the professional development is really about how they can improve instruction in their classroom. Okay. And do, do they, are they required, are teachers required to have so many of those days during the summer? They are not required to come to any during the summer. It is offered, we are offering it in the summer in case they want to do it in advance of teacher work week. Okay. But there is already, you'll see on the calendar, there's a professional development day during teacher work week. Okay. And we offer these to supplement that in the event that they want to get it, um, get moving on it in the summer. And then that frees up time during teacher work week. Okay, great. That's a good option. Thank you. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Other questions? Ms. Emil. That is a good option. As a former teacher, you know, everybody's different, just like our students are different. You know, some like to, you know, go right for summer vacation, and others, you know, would like to just do the, a little bit of that and then have that time at the beginning. So I'm glad we offer the um, different um, choices for them. Um, I just wanted to say, you all might have remembered when I brought up, you know, uh, Camp Hogwarts a few years ago, because, um, you know, uh, I had to take my children to town to go to Camp Hogwarts, and um, they loved it so much. I mean, they were, went for first years, they went for second years, then they went to upperclassmen. You know, they really had it down. Well, last spring, Mrs. Mack, who's the teacher, had a birthday party for her daughter, and the theme was Harry Potter. So uh, Tracy Ingle was there, too, and I said, you know, you need to get her to teach this here so parents don't have to take their kids into town. And um, so I'm glad um, that you were able to convince her because uh, that is really popular. The kids love that for some reason. And now my daughter is going to help and be a, I guess, counselor in training. So I, you know, I can't get my son to do it, but, you know. But I, I just am glad to see you guys doing that. So thank you very much. All right, other questions? Mr. Chairman, uh, so we're seeing an increase in the number of offerings, if I look at this right? Yes. And that's, that's terrific. Ms. Ayers and I at the school board conference for a couple of years have seen, talked to the representative from WHRO's the public TV station in, in the Hampton Roads area. And He's talked about a way to develop your own online courses. You develop them through then, and then eventually you own them. And so you don't have to pay a service provider any longer for the service provider. So that, I don't know if that's something we want to look at, you know, because I know Edgenuity is fairly expensive for us. To, or it, it, it may be something we can look at in terms of providing some, okay. some stipends or something for teachers to develop these courses yeah. because once we develop them then we own them yeah. and we can you know we can recover the cost of professional development probably in a few years by doing it so you know I don't know if we've got time or we've got or whether we have interest but it might be something we can look at but I, but I'm impressed with what we have I, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, it's a good use of our facilities and it's certainly educationally very sound to have the, have students doing uh, using their brains and, and being and being physically active over the summer. So, so thanks for that. Yeah, I agree. Other questions or comments? I, I have a couple, and I'll I'll try to be be brief with them. 
How many students are served by these programs? What's the total number for everything? Sorry. So it varies from year to year, okay. um, certainly, and we have to actually report to the state for our summer um, summer school programs mm -hmm. um, year over year, and uh, it depends on what the need is for recovery. Um, so just for example, if we're looking at camp specifically, we're going to see anywhere from 10 to 16 students participating in in some of our summer camps, um, depending on the interest level. As far as the summer school programs, um, we're going to make sure that if it's an English 9-10 class, uh, for example, that would serve anywhere from 6 to 12 students on, on average that we would see in those kinds of courses. Um, sometimes it's fewer and sometimes it's more, but we want to make sure, especially in those credit recovery courses, that we, um, but that we offer things so that students can get moving to the next level. But I can get you total numbers if you'd like that. Okay, well, let's, let's just talk, let's talk about the super summer camps, number one. Yes. Because th those are some exciting titles that you have. Yes. How, how, how large are those classes on average? So again, it depends okay. um, on, on what the, the interest is. Uh, if you walk into um, the hands-on, hands heads up, that, which is the cosmetology, okay. um, she's got anywhere from eight to 15. I've seen over the course of the last four years that she would have an average maybe of 10 to 12 students in there. Okay. Um, and then the athletic camps, um, oftentimes we've got a coach, a head coach that's doing that, but also may have some of the high school students that are helping some of the athletic um, team members that are assisting and so you could have upwards of 20, 25 students in some of those athletic camps. And then when you look at basketball, um, the basketball camps can be in excess of 40 students that will be there for the week. So again, it varies based on what the ability is for supervision um, and the number of adults that are participating, participating as well as any kind of counselors that are supporting that. Okay. Enrichment camps, are they required to be enrolled as a student in Powhatan County Public Schools to take advantage of those? We have had students that have requested that, and if there's space available, we will make that happen. Okay. So if they're here with staying with Grandma for the summer or Aunt and Uncle, yes. they could and be considered we've actually, for the program? And we've actually, I think, only had, um, I think we only had one request for it last year, but we would certainly discuss that. And um, the only concern is making sure that, um, that they are a student in good standing from, from where they came. I understand. Okay. And is it needs-based? I mean, if, if a student's unable to pay the cost um, associated with that, do we have provision to address that? I'm very glad you asked that. I did not put that in the presentation. We actually have several scholarships that are available. We had a nice donation from a community member last year, um, and we do have some scholarship money available for students who want to participate. So if there is any need, Good. we're happy to take care of that. Good. Good. All right. And, and last thing I wanted to ask you is the summer institutes for our staff. So what's, what, what do you project participation to be? So we actually did a survey or a, a review of what our participation is. Uh, we see about 25 to 30 percent at okay. each of the four sessions, again, so lower or higher depending. Um, but we ended up, I think, with close to 22 percent of our teachers who ended up waiting until that week in August of teacher work week. Okay. Um, but we saw, you know, in the 20s, 20 to 30 percent were participating in those um, three summer activities. We want to make sure that we're providing opportunities for them uh, to take the courses that they want, but also we know that sometimes there's a critical mass of teachers that you want to have in, in a specific session so that it's meaningful for them and for the teacher, and so we've actually encouraged them this year that they may want to look at sessions where they might want to partner with a content team member or a grade level team so that they can come and work together and be collaborative that way. One thing, if I could, Mr. Chairman, I don't um, know if Dr. Amahandra mentioned, but we do survey our staff ahead of time and build the summer PD around what they say their oh, needs good. are. Okay. So, um, you know, that's why I think we get 75 to 78 percent of our teachers that are participating during the summer because it is really tailored to their needs. And as Dr. Amahandra said, we will have uh, teachers that come to us with ideas and say, listen, you know, all the art teachers and the music teachers want to do this collaborative project. Can we have a room and get together and, you know, we're not paying them to come in. So, of course, the answer is yes. Come on in and we'll be happy to support you and, um, you know, give you time and, and um, space to, to be creative and to collaborate with one another. All right. That, that's the last of my questions. Anything else from the other board, other board members? All right. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, thank you Dr. Jones. Sure. All right, so that takes us to the superintendent's report. Yep. Uh, first item, Dr. Tibbs is here to give a construction and facilities update for um, April and May, beginning of May. 
Dr. Tibbs. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So in tradition, going down through the schools, the five schools uh, continuing performing work orders when they are received, specifically to note at Powhatan Elementary School, the light fixtures that we have talked about several times in the east parking lot have been replaced. Uh, those are the new LED lights to match the rest of that parking lot, the front parking lot that was put in as part of the construction project. Flat Rock Elementary School, we have had to replace two light fixtures in the northwest stair stairwell at that building. Also, as a um, result of our fire inspections that were done over spring break, um, we were received a report and several batteries in the strobe lights were not working, so we had to replace those as per the fire inspection report. Also down to Powhatan High School, uh, note the same thing. We had to replace several of the batteries in the strobe lights there. The field hockey lighting was fully completed last Monday with the calibration that was done, and they are now fully operational. Uh, that system that we did put in is a wireless technology system so we can program them to come on. Uh, we also can, pro can use an app on our phone if, for example, Friday night football, if we've got a large crowd and we want to have some overspill of lighting, we can turn them on by the, the, the click of our app on our phone if we need to. Uh, also to note at Powhatan High School, today we actually finished the replacing of the shade cloth in the greenhouse. The shade cloth in the greenhouse has been there since it was built. Uh, very deteriorated and, and really just falling down and so we actually um, replaced that today and, and finished that work today. For the construction projects, very exciting there. Uh, several of the areas are really nearing their completion time. Um, I won't go through all of the areas but area A, B, and C are looking very good. At this point all the ceilings have been dropped in, uh, lighting is in, casework is in, they are now working on projectors white erase boards and speakers in predominantly all of the classrooms. A lot of the finished work has taken place as well. Uh, for example, you'll see in the pictures in a few minutes in the library, they've started putting the carpet tiles down. They look very nice um, and doing a lot of the finished work in those areas. Area D, uh, working on some finishing the painting and ceiling tiles, wiring and lights, uh, second floor. A lot of work to, to wrap up and, and finish up and, and get that uh, button down in those areas. Area E, we continue to work there in that section of the building um, with electrical rough ends, fire alarms, block fill, just really trying to, to tighten in on that area as well. That is a predominant area of focus. That is where most of the work is happening and at this point is in that area E. Area F, which is a concession building, um, the exterior doors have been completed and they are really just about done with that section as well. They're finishing the coping on the, the rooftop at this time. Site work is a big thing that's happening there now. If you drove by there, you see the construction fence is now down. The contractor trailers are predominantly gone with the exception of one from in front of the building. So it looks very nice at this point. Uh, they're really working on doing the finished grade and we should be starting to see uh, straw and grass seed going down here in the next uh, couple of days, if not within the next week. Uh, the front area curbs are done, parking lots are, are in good shape, the stone base is in place, paving will start next week, uh, roughly on or about May 14th, weather permitting, so we'll start to see blacktop going in around there as well uh, in, in that whole um, facility. Transportation maintenance facility, uh, phase two continues, site work continues there, they're starting to wrap that up. Asphalt was poured last Friday and on Saturday, so we have asphalt in that facility at this point. Striping should be done this week in there or at that facility. Security systems are in progress. We're working to get the cameras on the um, poles that are at the fuel depot. The fuel depot, they were working to finish connecting that today and connect the card readers. So hopefully we'll be up and running with that fuel depot here, uh, hopefully within the next week. At the water tower, uh, exciting news there, the paint crew is on site. They returned on April the 23rd. Um, they've started to get set up. If you've noticed, there's now a bonnet over top of it. Um, so that is exciting work. They've been working on the inside, painting the inside, and, and putting epoxy on the inside. So hopefully we'll start to see work on the outside here very soon. All right. What's the completion date on that, Dr. Two? July 1. I one for everything. The tower will be completely finished. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. So this is our update for, oh, whoops, <coughs> for the construction facilities. 
Jim uh, Space. Jim Space is looking very good at this point. Um, they are putting the padding on the walls so that when students are playing basketball and other activities, they don't hurt themselves. Um, but that's looking very nice. Kitchen area and the far right picture is, is the partitions in the bathroom. Uh, when we did our last tour, the tile work was in and you could see that. So now we've got the partitions going in, uh, lavatory basins and things of that nature are, are going in at this point. Stage area, another picture of the restrooms. The left picture in this is a picture of the workroom, the teacher workroom, one of them. Um, specific to note is the artwork that is on the wall. Uh, it's very cool looking on the wall. When I looked at it on the ground, it, it was kind of mind boggling for me because a lot of geometric shapes, and I'm not a shape person. Uh, but on the wall, it looked very nice. And so uh, that space has come along very well. The right picture is one of the sections of the library. These are the carpet tiles that went down in, in the library. Site work, the left picture is the front parent drop-off loop. This will be the parent drop-off loop in the mornings that will be completely distant from bus drop-off. So the buses and the parent drop-off will not intermingle. Um, and then the right picture is pretty much just a, a shot down the front parking lot. All of these are site work pictures. Um, it was a pretty day yesterday when I took these pictures, so I decided to add some of them. And the last slide, just wanted to kind of give you an update on the move process and, and our schedule in terms of the move. Uh, actually, this afternoon, a few hours ago, I met with the middle school staff and explained to them the process of distributing boxes. We have the boxes here. Um, they are in the, at the transportation facility and storage. We will begin to distribute them to the staff next week along with their labels. Uh, so they can begin to pack those and uh, during that discussion we discussed the box distribution we discussed programmatic needs um, recognizing that there's going to be specific programs that are going to need specific items moved band pe equipment things of that nature so um, we'll take care of that we will distribute boxes to the staff next week so that they have them uh, ready to pack June the 15th, we do have planned for the staff, the entire middle school staff, to go to the building on a tour. Uh, I've worked with the contractor to ensure that that would be feasible and amenable, and so they have granted us that. So we're going to take the middle school staff over there for a tour prior to them leaving for the summer so that the excitement can be built and they can think about it and, and, and know their space. Um, they won't have furniture in their space at that time, but they at least will be able to see their classroom and get acclimated with the building and, and really just kind of um, hopefully get some excitement built. They're already very excited. Uh -huh. um, July 2018 is when the admin, uh, sorry, I skipped. Ju June 18th through the 28th is when Hildrup Movers will be here. During those two weeks is when we will be moving the belongings of the staff over to that building. Um, we are predominantly just moving boxes and that has been shared with them with the exception of those areas that have programmatic needs that need to be moved. Um, but we will put the boxes in place and they will be in their classrooms ready for them when they are allowed to come in in, in August. The first part of August we're going to, Dr. Martin and I are going to work together on figuring out and, and developing a schedule, a timetable for them to be able to come in because we don't want to overflow. Uh, dumpsters with trash and, and empty boxes and things of that nature. So strategically figuring out how to, how to get them in there so they can unpack and get themselves acclimated. Um, during July, the admin team and the 12-month staff will be allowed to come into the building to begin to unpack themselves and get themselves acclimated with the building as well. So a um, lot of excitement, a lot, lot of time is going to be spent in doing this over the summer, and it's going to fly by. So we, we've got a tighten our boot strings and have at it. Any questions? All right, questions for Dr. Tibbs. When is the furniture delivered? Furniture delivery, uh, I've got two calls that I've received at this point. It, it's a time frame between middle to the end of June for about 30 days. So it'll be in uh, by August 1. All the furniture will be in by August 1 just depends on who's, who's distributing and, and what vendor we're getting them from and, and what type of furniture that it is. So you'll have the boxes from the staff in there before the furniture is delivered? Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. And then did we talk about um, a community 
open house or are we waiting till after the school opens or yeah we're, what, we? what we've discussed with um, dr. Martin and uh, dr. Tibbs is to um, give the staff some time to get settled mm -hmm. um, make sure that um, we um, punch some punch list items and um, some final details that always happen when you come into a project so we're looking at sometime maybe October time frame oh, okay. um, doing an open house but certainly the parents and um, students will be in there for their normal orientation activities and those types of things okay. wonderful wonderful the, I, you're right the excitement is building I'm glad to see um, it's kind of like you know it's almost gonna be here <laughs> So thank you. Um, I had a question about um, your report. What are what what are strobe lights? Uh, you know, I'm thinking disco. You know, what what is a strobe light? <laughs> the, the lights that are on the wall. If we were to have a With power the outage at the oh. and a fire, they come. oh okay. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. you explaining that. Yes. That's it. Thank you. Can we get Let's an update go. on the floor? In that sure. area that we mm -hmm. have difficulties. Oh, yep. Yeah. So in the um, CTE area, we um, have. Um, finished executing a change order. Um, uh, we had the, some of the um, old floors from the old CT area once we ripped up tile and carpet and that type of thing. Um, the original scope of work of polishing and grinding the floors, uh, we decided wasn't going to be sufficient to have a uh, first class um, area for those teachers that are teaching in that area. So. We've uh, explored a couple different options. We looked at an epoxy, putting it on top of the floors. Uh, quite frankly, the costs as well as the uh, maintenance on that, having to redo it every eight, ten years, uh, we decided not to go that route. So what we're going to do is do a deep grind. So we'll be going down in those floors an additional um, quarter to half an inch, uh, and we believe that will take care of most of the imperfections. Uh, there will be some patching that is done, but it will still be a, a concrete polished floor like in the other areas. Um, because of the deep grind, some of those areas, it'll be more of an aggregate finish, uh, but that, I think that will only enhance the, the area. So um, after looking at several different options involving the architects, involving the general contractors, uh, we decided uh, late last week to move that route. Um, there is an additional cost for that, but it's well within our contingency uh, funds that are set aside for um, situations such as this, um, and it will push back um, completion of that area uh, <coughs> those floors by a few weeks but we'll still be well within the time frame of furniture delivery and moving in and uh, getting everybody um, there well before the teachers return okay, thank you questions about the floor all right dr dr tibbs under site work you've got number two is enclosure the chiller was stopped and differing extra scope work is being considered mm -hmm. what is that on the back and around the back of the building where the chillers are located there are bollards concrete bollards that are placed in the ground and it's supposed to have an enclosure around it the issue is is that the concrete bollards are sitting almost 18 inches some of them some of them are more above the sidewalk that, where they're located okay. and it's a it's a main sidewalk around the back of the building so they are exploring what they are going to do for, from an enclosure standpoint to make it safe uh, essentially for students okay all right and what are we doing anything or are you doing anything to control um, traffic and access to the rear of the structure now that it's a little bit easier to get around I've had several people tell me that they've sort of driven around a little bit mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. are you doing anything after hours or during the day to limit that access really th the only thing that's being done after hours is, is the contractors ensuring that the building is totally secure okay. all of the doors have a contractor key set in them and so there's only certain individuals that have keys to enter into the building so from a driving access there unless we put barricades up there's okay. really nothing that I know we are done. still using the track and some other areas back there the school is right. for different activities perhaps I don't know perhaps there's some community organizations as well but right all right right okay any other questions for dr. Tibbs or dr. Jones well Liam? now might be a good time for um, thanking dr. Tibbs and his team for the nice uh, ribbon cutting ceremony and uh, dedication uh, many people have said to me they saw it in the paper and they said they didn't know oh did they just move in I said they've been moved in so I you know it's getting out and people are shocked to to learn um, 
uh, how old the other building was. Some of them didn't know and realize. And so it, it was a, and the ceremony itself was really nice. I thought Very the nice. whole thing um, and the inside pictures showing um, you, you guys talking to the uh, employees about their um, new work environment. And I, they said about how glad they are that they feel more productive because they can get more things done and so it was a real long time coming and it was a very nice event so thank Good. you you're welcome all right i would certainly echo that i was going to talk about it a little oh, while but um, no it's okay no but it, it was very nice and uh, i enjoyed meeting the staff talking to them a little bit some of them i knew some of them i had not met mm -hmm. and they were very very proud of their new work environment so the, the entire board, Dr. Jones, Dr. Tibbs, from, from me personally as, as an individual board member, I would commend you and your staff. I think that it speaks volumes about the efforts that you've done to make that a very positive environment for them. Sure. Very nice ceremony and the level of engagement from the staff that day, I will just say to you, I thought was extraordinary. So very nicely done. Good, thank you. You're welcome. All right, other questions? You look eager to step away from the podium. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> He's not going anywhere. He's well, got the no, next two items yeah, to do. But right. this is what we call the celebrations part, there okay? You go. We need to be positive and give all the accol accolades because sometimes, you know, there's a lot of negative things. So, you know, I think you ought to learn to bask in them. <laughs> good advice. All right. Okay, hey, I believe you're the next Dr. One Tibbs, one. Uh, landscape maintenance contract. Yes, uh, the next item is landscape maintenance contract group number four. If you recall, last month mm -hmm. we approved a new vendor, a contractor to do our landscape maintenance contract for groups one through three. Group four is our Bermuda fields, all of our Bermuda fields, which in incorporates about 25 acres across the division, is currently maintained by WTG LLC. Uh, the original bid was conducted in 2014. The upcoming year for this group would be the fourth option year renewal for this particular organization, so this will have to go out for bid next year. Um, so the contract will go out for bid in 2020. Uh, the contract amount for this group uh, is for $59,218, and this is just receiving information at this point, and we're asking for mm -hmm. approval uh, May 22nd. Second. Second, thank you. I was going to say 23rd. All right, so understanding we're just receiving information on this tonight. Does uh, anybody from the board have questions at this point? Ms. Emil. I um, had, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, that's the next one. Go ahead. All right. Okay. Other questions? <coughs> All right. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Sure. Right. Um, and the, another item, and again, this is receiving information about renewal of contract for custodial services with SSC, Dr. Tibbs. All right. We contracted our custodial services with SSC Service, Solution, Service Solutions in 2011. They provide custodial services at all five of our locations, our administration offices, and our transportation facility. Uh, the contract amount with SSC Service Solutions for the 2018-19 school year, uh, actually this will be 19, no this is right, 18-19 school year, will be $831,037.03. This amount includes an annual inflation adjustment of 1.8%. All right, questions for Dr. Tibbs. Ms. Emil. This is the one I had the question yes, for. Um, an employee said that they hadn't gotten a raise in five years. Do we have control over their um, raises or if they get a raise or don't get one? No, but I don't know that that's accurate. I that's thought they gave accurate. a raise to all their employees last year as um, part of the contract that we, right. um, remember last year we amended the contract, we added some extra hours, we added mm -hmm. day porter mm -hmm. at the schools that wanted them, uh, we added some additional help over the summer, and I think um, the consistent feedback I've got is those changes that we made last summer mm -hmm. have made a huge difference this year and that um, I haven't received any complaints about SSC and um, from any of the schools other than um, filling up soap at a couple of the bathroom dispensers. But other than that, everybody seems real happy. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, there was a raise that was included as part of that. Well, maybe this employee needs to uh, speak up. And would she talk to you, Dr. Tibbs, or who did, who did talk they talk to? Ken. She would talk to Ken Martin, who is our, okay. our uh, supervisor right. with SSC. He's a supervisor for our entire division. Well, maybe it was an, you know, oversight and it wasn't in her paycheck or something, but I'll tell her to do that. Thank yep. you. Mm -hmm. 
All right, any other questions or information? <coughs> All right, Dr. Jones. Thank you, Dr. Tim. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Mr. Conk. Mr. Chairman, uh, at this time I make a motion that we enter into closed session pursuant to code 2.23711A1 to discuss the employment, resignation, and leave of specific employees. And pursuant to code 22.1-60 to discuss the division superintendent contract. Codes 2.23711A1 and 22.1-60. All right, is there a second to Mr. Conk's motion? We have a second. All in favor of entering into closed session? Please respond aye. with aye. 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 <coughs> Motion carries 5-0. We are in closed session.